Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 91 surviving episodes broadcast on NBC Radio from 1934 to 1957, we bring to you Lights Out. Ironized Yeast presents Lights out, everybody. It is later than you think. Lights Out brings you stories of the supernatural and the supernormal, dramatizing the fantasies and the mysteries of the unknown. We tell you this frankly, so if you wish to avoid the excitement and tension of these imaginative plays, we urge you calmly but sincerely to turn off your radio now. This is Frank Martin. Before bringing you the final Lights Out play tonight, a word from Ironized Yeast. Friends, are you getting all you could get out of life? Or are you so run down, weak, and on edge these war days that good fortune, good friends, and good fun often pass you by? Well, if vitamin B1 and iron shortage is what's to blame, try Ironized Yeast Tablets. They give you these exact two substances. They've been of splendid benefit to people who used to suffer from these shortages. Today, these people tell of glorious pep, strength, and needed pounds regained. So now they can really enjoy life again. That's right. The name is Ironized Yeast Tablets. And now, lights out, everybody. Miss Goddard, answer the phone, please. Yes, Mr. Obler. Yes? Oh, yes, Miss Harrison. Here he is. Mr. Obler? Yes? Miss Harrison. Oh, oh, thank you. Hello, Joan. How's the phantom lady? Oh, yeah. Yeah, am I in trouble? Well, the last light's out. I just don't know what to write about. Oh, no, I got plenty of ideas, but... Oh, well, men dying in foxholes, and what am I doing? Thinking of fantastic... Well, thanks very much, but I still insist that I ought to be... <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Sure, I'll make this last one a good one, and then that'll be that. If I live through it. Huh? <laughs> no, no, I was just talking to myself. I've been doing that rather consistently these last few days. <laughs> yes, I, I guess all those zombies and ghouls and Luke Carews have finally caught up with me. <laughs> I know, I know. Two aspirins and a glass of water every half hour. Uh, now, look here, Miss Harrison, don't worry about me. I'll get the story written tonight if I have to talk to the devil himself to do it. All right, John, all right. Yeah, sure. Oh, fine, fine. Call me back in an hour, and I'll have some kind of a plot figured out. I hope. Give my regards to Norman. Talk to you later. Well, Miss Goddard, let's get to work. Yes, sir. What time is it, anyway? 11.32. Sorry I have to keep you working so late? That's perfectly all right. I know you have to have that play done by tomorrow morning. I'm glad to help. You're an angel. Angel. That's a strange word to use here in this room where I've thought up so many demons and monsters. Tell me, or maybe you won't want to tell me. What, Mr. Obler? Working with me on these lights out plays, do you ever get frightened? Well... You do, don't you? Yes, I do get frightened many times. Uh, There was a time I'd have found that very amusing, but not tonight. Is there something wrong, Mr. Obler? I don't know. Tell me... Did you ever sit alone in a room at night and have a premonition? I mean, suddenly get the feeling that somewhere in the house, perhaps in the darkness in the next room, something was waiting, something of malignancy and evil? (laughs) What's the matter with me? If I keep on talking like this, they'll be using me as Exhibit X in a psychopathic ward. Come on, let's get to work. 
Yes, sir. Uh, let me see. We'll start out next week's play with the regular lights out opening. Lights out everybody. Chimes later than you think. Gong. First character is named um, uh, Hellman. Call him Hellman. Jack Hellman. H-E-L-L-M-A-N. Two hours. Got that? Mm-hmm. Um, he commits a murder and he... Um, Oh, what's the use? I can't write another one of these things. Ghosts and groans and blood. I, I tell you, I can't do it. I can't do it. Mr. Oberler. I'm sorry. Look here, Miss Goddard. You better run along. But aren't we going no, to... No, I just can't write anymore tonight. But the cast, they'll be standing by. The rehearsal. The devil with the rehearsal. I'm not going to go insane writing these things for anybody. Now, now, run along, please. Try to get some rest and... If you come back early in the morning, we'll see what we can do. Just as you say. Are you sure you're all right? Please go. All right. Good night. Good night. What's come over me anyway? Why, why did I tell her to go? I gotta write this play. Premonitions. <laughs> she must have thought I was getting soft. And... Who? Who's there? Oh. Oh, I am in bad shape. The wind rattles the window and I... <laughs> lights out. Author goes nuts. There's a headline for variety. I gotta get down to earth. Quarter to twelve. Joan said she'd call back in an hour. I've gotta have some kind of a plot by then. Let me see. How about a, a press agent named Black killing a man named White and Black and White murder? Oh, is that corny? <sighs> Maybe I could use a story about a Hollywood producer. Let's see, Johnny Auer. He meets a girl and then's afraid because the girl's husband. Oh, is that out of character? Huh. How about Nero chopping off heads in the Roman circus and... Huh. Certainly is quiet in here. <laughs> Yell all day for quiet, and now that I've got it, I... I have got the jitters. What the devil have I got to be jittery about? Things are what they are, if anybody knows that I do. Two and ten makes four, unless you're talking about curved space, and them that has hold on to what they've got, and anybody who's in this war for profit ought to have his bones broken off, and... Th what the devil am I talking about? Huh? Okay. I'd better stop kidding myself. I know what's wrong. I want to write it, and yet I don't. What's the matter with me? Afraid to put it down on paper? What have I got to be afraid of? Here goes. <laughs> Get it over with and outline a title undecided. Get out of my system. Play opens in the cell of a monastery in the Middle Ages. The mystic is cowered in the corner of his room. Outside, a mob is clamoring for his life. It appears that a horrible crime has been committed in the village below... A horrible monster had torn a woman. It appears that this creature, brought into being through the incantations of the sorcerer, was the concentration of all the evil in men's hearts and minds. A tremendous force of fiendishness and inhumanity put into living flesh to roam the world and commit unspeakable hu Of all the drivel. A tremendous force of fiendishness and inhumanity put into living flesh to roam the world and commit unspeakable hu Brr. Well, drivel or not, there it is on paper. Me own monster conceived in me own mind. Congratulations, Papa. Have a cigar. <laughs> conceived in my own mind. Huh. That's what that crazy monk said in that book Nat Wolf gave me. I wonder who gave Nat that book. Conceived in... Where's that book anyway? It ought to be... <laughs> yeah, I even marked the page. And I say unto thee that if thou shalt be evil and do evil and think evil... And let thy mind rest upon this evilness in the light of day and in the darkness of night for seven days and seven nights. There may come into being a thing of evil, and it shall take the form of the evilness of thy thought. <sighs> Written by half star mystic more than ten centuries ago, and I... Funny I should have thought of those words tonight. I've been thinking about them for a week. Shall take the evil, the form of the evilness of thy thought, Seven days and seven... Who? Who's there? No, 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 no! What? What the... 
You, you in my mind. You're, you're just in my mind. No, no. You, you, you evil. You, you, you don't exist. I tell you. I, I thought you up. You're, you're a dream. That's it, a dream. When I wake up, door. It is a dream. It's got to be a dream. Come in. Come in. Get me out of this dream. Get me out of this dream. Get Hi, me. Hi, Arch. Well, don't you ever open doors anymore? Now, what's the big idea uh, sitting in here all the time? It's not a dream. It's, it's still. Hey, Arch, what's cooking? Eli, get out. Oh, now, Arch, Don't stand there. Look at me. Get out. Can't you see it? Can't you see it? Get out. Get out of here. Hey, what's Eli, the get gag? Out. See in here what? Behind you. Look behind you. Well, there's nothing behind me but the wall. Eli. Say, hey, what is this anyway? A preview of a. Eli, get out of here. All right, all right. Now, let's have it. What is this? A preview of a new play? Eli. Boy, am I glad you're quitting lights out after all. Can't you hear them? Who? Hear who? Eli, behind you. Behind me what? What's the matter with you anyway, Arch? Don't you feel well? You keep staring back at me. It must be a dream. Stuff. It must be a dream. What's a dream? It must be a dream. Are you tight? Dream. What's the matter? The pink elephant's beginning to get... Oh, no! No! My brother! No, my brother! Let go of me! You think to my brother! No! 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 Eli. Eli. Oh, no. Eli. Operator. Operator, please. Send police right away, my brother. Please, send police, send police. My brother, my brother, my brother. Yeah. How much time we got to go on this shift yet, Joe? Uh-oh, uh-oh, hold it. Here comes Frank Sinatra again. Squad 39 and 48. Go to Ventura and Redwood. Drunk, making a disturbance. Claims his brother ate by a monster. Squad 39 well, and 48. Go to let's Ventura go. and Redwood. Drunk, claims brother ate up by a thing. KLPD signing off. Tell you, it's true, officer. It's true. My brother, my own brother. I saw it. I saw all it with my own right, eyes. All I right, all right, all right. So you saw it. Now take it easy, young fellow. You're in bad shape. I tell you, I'm not drunk. I'm as sober as you are. Now don't get funny. You thick-headed fool. Look, it's there behind you. Huh? What? The thing, the monster. Look at it. Believe my brother. My oh, brother. I've heard of him seeing snakes and pink elephants, but this is the first one I've seen this bad off, eh, Joe? But he don't look tight. Oh, you never can tell in the valley. There, the, the two of you. Can't you see him? Can't you see him? Slobber there in that corner. Right hey, hey, maybe we better take him down to the station and let him cool off in the can for a while, eh? Yeah. yeah. Stop staring at me, the two of you. Why won't you believe me? Why won't you believe me? See, believe? Clarence, maybe this guy's on the level. Oh, are you nuts, too? If something happened to his brother, there'd be someone around, wouldn't there? And there ain't nothing in this room. What have I done? What have I done? You've done? What do you mean? I thought of the monster. Seven days and seven nights. I see, Joe, the guy's nuts. Let's find out who he is. What's your name, young fella? Yeah, what's your name? Quiet down now. What's your name? Oh, what difference does that make? The thing that sits there and grins at me. Why don't you see it and help me? Why oh, don't you come on, come on now. Me? What's your name? Let's have it. <laughs> Opaler. What's your business? What do you do for a living? <laughs> well? Radio. I, I write radio. What's the difference? Radio? Opaler. Say, ain't you the guy that writes them screwy lights out things Tuesday nights? Yes. Yes, help me. Please, please help that, me. Joe. What? Well, this is the guy that writes them ghost things I was telling you about, you know, over the radio. Obler, the guy who always makes his cops Irish. You get it? <laughs> it's one of them gags, one of them publicity gags. Gags? Oh, you infernal... Now, son. wait a minute, fellow. You Watch mean... your tongue. I tell you, it's not a gag. It's here, here in the room. It took my brother in... There. Can't you hear it? Can't you hear it? Huh? It's laughing. An infernal laugh. Listen to it. Listen to it. <laughs> Is is later than you uh, did. Okay, young fella, if it ain't a gag, you better take a broom and go back to bed. Uh, now, listen, you were going to hang around for a while, so take it easy. Come on, Joe, let's get out of here. This no, no, wait. Is true, is wait, come, come don't on. let me, don't. It's here, I tell you, it's here, don't let me. Oh. What'll I do, what'll I do? I gotta get out of here. Yeah, that's it. I've gotta get out of here and find someone who'll believe me. Oh, it won't let me out? No, no. Don't come near me. Don't come. The police, they come back. Come in. Come in. Hi, Arch. 
I was just driving by and I thought... No, no, Mercedes, get out of here, get out. What? No, no. Arch, what's the matter? What are you staring at? Mercedes, believe me, you gotta get out, you gotta get out. No! Mercedes! No! Help! No! Help! Oh, no! Please! No! Mercedes, help. No! Oh, no! Help! No! No! Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to take a moment's intermission in tonight's Lights Out story, the tale of a weird and horrible monster dreamed by its author into actual existence. In this moment, let's return to the world of stark reality, where a man is saying... Don't talk to me about having fun tonight. I feel too tired out, same as last night and many other nights. I'm getting thin as a rail. I'm too jittery to eat or sleep as I should. I feel like I'd never be able to enjoy life again. Now, wait a minute. Lots of men and women who used to feel that way have found it was due to simple vitamin B1 and iron deficiency. If that's your trouble, try ironized yeast tablets. Ironized yeast tablets? That's right. Ironized yeast tablets give you vitamin B1 with iron, the exact two substances you need when you suffer from these deficiencies. It's this two-way help of ironized yeast that's been of such splendid benefit in such cases. Yet the cost of these pleasant little tablets is only a few pennies a day. Gosh. Maybe I ought to try ironized yeast tablets. By all means do, if vitamin B1 and iron deficiency is what's getting you down. Then see if pretty soon you aren't saying... It's sure swell to feel like myself again. I've got back my old time weight and pep. Like a new lease on life. I'm certainly glad I tried ironized yeast tablets. And now back to our final Lights Out story. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, what's going on here? Didn't oh, no. we tell you to go to bed? Is that the way to act? We heard you screaming all the way down in the... Oh, oh no. Where did she come from? She, her, torn. Give me her gun. Huh? That thing in the corner there, won't you look at it? Won't you believe me? Give me that gun. Get away from me. The gun, I'll shoot it. I'll shoot that No, gun. no, stand where you are. Stand where you are let you have a slug. Huh? You got it coming to you, that girl. Oh. They'll burn you for it as sure as my name's Clarence McMenzer. And I'd like to be the guy that pulls the switch. in here, sir. You've got five minutes. Yes, I know, I know. Oh, Mr. Kenny, I've been waiting for you. I got here as soon as I could. Uh, looks bad, Obler. Very bad. What do you mean? I didn't do anything. I tell you, I didn't. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I know, I know. But, uh, Obler, you can't do a thing like that and just walk away from it. Well, I've explained it to you. I've explained it to everyone a hundred times, a thousand times. Won't anyone believe me? Now, look here, Arch. I'm your attorney. I want to help you. A great number of people want to help you, and we certainly can't do a thing unless you cooperate. Yes, that's what I said. Cooperate. What do you want me to do? Tell the truth. The whole truth. But I've told you. I've yes, told you. Yes, yes, I know what you've told me. A horrible thing that you conceived in your mind came to life and uh, did a number of uh, peculiar things. Uh, but, oh, see here, surely you don't think that even the most stupid jury on earth is going to believe that nonsense? You don't believe me. Well, I've heard many peculiar alibis from my radio clients in time, but... Well, listen, if you want to plead temporary insanity... But I'm not insane. I'm not insane. I'm not insane. Then let's hear a sane explanation of what happened that night. I told you. I told you everything just the way it happened. My brother came yes, home and... Yes, 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 I know. Well? Your brother came into the room and was eaten up by this monster, and then that girl... Oh, what's the use? Apparently you want to die. I've tried so hard to make you understand... And I've tried to make you understand that if you don't stop this infernal nonsense and hurry up and tell me the truth of what really happened... You'll either find yourself taking a one-way walk to the electric chair or wake up in a padded cell in an asylum for the criminally insane. What? The fact of the matter is they've already appointed a lunacy commission to pass on your case. Lunacy commission? Oh, see here, Arch. Wait. I... No, wait. Let me talk. Go right ahead. That's what I want you to do. Maybe I am insane. I don't know. At first I told myself it was nothing but a nightmare. That I'd wake up and find it had all been nothing but a weird dream that never really happened. But it's not a dream and no one will believe my story, not even you. It's such an irrational story. How can you expect anyone to believe it? Now, take that part about your brother being devoured alive by this, this monster. It happened. It happened just as I said it happened. It's common knowledge that your brother is pre-induction vacationing up north with your mother. He came back. You mean they are coming back. I sent your brother a wire to come back and bring your mother home at once. They ought to be here today. My brother's dead. Well, that's your preposterous story. This this thing, this monster who's supposed to have committed all these crimes. Where is he? Where did he come from? Where has he gone to? I... I don't know. Did the police see him? No. Did anyone see him? No. 
Oh, Arch, Arch, if you're going to think up an alibi to save yourself, for heaven's sake, think up a better one than that one. I'm not trying to think up alibis. I'm just trying to explain what happened to you and maybe to myself. I haven't believed much during my life, except perhaps that somewhere there was a power that went beyond life and death. What happened to me isn't explainable in any terms that you and I... But, Mr. Gang, I tell you, it did happen. I thought of a monster for seven days and seven nights in my own mind. And like that prophet of the Middle Ages warned, the evil thing came to life, and yet only I could see it and hear it. And do you see and hear it now? No. That's what I can't quite understand. Perhaps the horrible thing only has life when I think about it intensely. <sighs> Inten That's it. It only has life when my thoughts give it life. Like an idea, don't you see, Mr. Gang? Like an idea only exists when you think of it. Your thought gives it life. And that's the way it is with that terrible thing. Listen. What? Listen. Listen. Do you hear him? There. There he is in the corner. What? I what? tell you, he's there. Don't you hear it? Blubbering and slobbering. I see it now. I see it. You think? I'm not afraid of you anymore. You hear me? I'm not afraid. I'll kill you. 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 I'll
Midnight already? Yeah, I've been sitting here very comfortably, and I finally thought up the plot line, and believe me, it's quite a brainstorm. I die. Well, sure, sure, it's my final broadcast, so why not? No, no, I'm not gagging. Listen to me. You know, it's all about a monster that I conceived in my own little bitty mind, and it comes to life. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't had a Coke in hours. Now, it's going to be one of those, you know, crazy stories inside of a story. Now, now listen. The way I've got it figured out is this. Now, I'm supposed to be sitting here thinking of this horrible monster, and suddenly I turn around, and there it is, see? And my young brother comes in, and this monster eats him up alive, and then Mercy McCambridge comes in, and she... Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Joan. Hold it for a minute. I think someone came in. I imagine it's Bernie. I'll see who... Ah! Hello! Hello! Joan! Joan, listen! That thing! It's true! This time it's really happening! No! 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 Well, Mr. Obler? Mr. Obler, where are you? I'm way down here. What are you doing down there? Didn't you hear the play? I'm dead. <laughs> All right, Frank. I'll come back to Earth long enough to say goodbye to our friends after you've had your say. I've got a word of cheer for you folks who are underweight, run down, jittery, often tired out. If vitamin B1 and iron shortage is what's getting you that way, remember... Ironized yeast tablets give you the exact two substances you need. Of course, a rundown condition may be due to other causes. If in doubt, see your doctor. But if your trouble is simply vitamin B1 and iron shortage, remember, ironized yeast has been of such splendid help in such cases that it's sold on this money-back basis. If you don't begin to eat better, to feel better, and so sleep better, the cost of the first bottle will be refunded to you in full by ironized yeast, Box IY, Rawway, New Jersey. And now, how about those farewells, Mr. Obler? Yes, after a full year of blood and suspense and death in the night, the time has come to put lights out away and go on to other things. Thanks to those people behind the scenes who have helped so much, engineers, sound men, actors. Now, starting next week at the same time, Ironized Yeast is going to bring you a new version of an old favorite, Big Town, yes, Big Town. And if a note of reality of our times has crept into a play now and then... Forgive me, but even a fictionizer can't always forget that there's a very real war going on for very real human issues. So, right now, it's goodbye from a man named Obler and a cordial invitation to listen in to the show that exceeds lights out, Big Town. Yes, Big Town, the thrilling dramatic pageant of America's mightiest metropolis, as mirrored by Steve Wilson's courageous newspaper, The Illustrated Press. Listen as Steve takes you behind the headlines for the stories that are the lifeblood of a great newspaper. Remember... Next Tuesday at this same time, Big Town. And if you need more vitamin B1 and iron, be sure to try ironized yeast. But remember, there's only one ironized yeast. You'll know it instantly by the yellow and orange package and by the big letters IY on the container and on each tablet. It is later. If you're in the middle of fall house cleaning, stop and listen to this. Save time and money by taking out dirt and grease spots from your furniture and rugs yourself right in your own home. Use Energine cleaning fluid. Energine takes out dirt and grease spots almost like magic. It's quick, easy to use. Just moisten a cloth with Energine, brush gently on the spot as directed on the container. That's all you do. So spruce up those home furnishings of yours. Buy a large economical container of Energine cleaning fluid and keep things clean with Energine. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.